Hi, I'm Dr. Emily Gornada, and I'm a licensed psychologist specializing in maternal mental health. Let's go over how reparenting is helpful and 10 tips for reparenting yourself. Reparenting can have a beneficial impact on many people's lives. Examining how your childhood negatively impacts your view of yourself, your relationships, and your perception of the world gives you the power to rewrite these messages and live a happier life. Self-parenting can be used to help a person create healthy boundaries, build healthier relationships, become a better parent, improve emotional regulation, rediscover and increase life satisfaction, and build confidence. How to reparent yourself. Reparenting is a process that takes time and effort. Establishing habits that would have been beneficial to you in childhood can help you avoid becoming discouraged. Focus on understanding yourself and your patterns, practicing acceptance of these patterns, and gently altering these patterns until they improve. Here are 10 tips for reparenting yourself. Number one, be self-compassionate. The most important thing you can do for yourself is practice self-compassion. It's important to remember that no one chooses their parents. Because of this, focus on being gentle with yourself as you attempt to change what you were unable to control as a child. Number two, honor your feelings. Identifying, validating, and meeting your emotional needs is one of the hardest parts of reparenting. People are often provided with limited emotional language as children and are taught to categorize emotions as either good or bad. Remind yourself that all emotions are necessary, regardless of how we feel about them. Emotions will come up. It's how we respond to them that's important. Number three, cling to curiosity. Reparenting is a continual process of studying our responses, identifying which ones are unhealthy and working to understand why we developed them in the first place. Instead of judging yourself, continue to stay curious as you look at your patterns with more clarity and accuracy. The better we see and understand a problem, the more effectively we're able to address and change it. Number four, be patient with yourself. It's important to remember that our understandings of ourselves, relationships, and the world are often stored in our subconscious minds. We're typically not aware of the patterns we developed as children. Remember that it took years to form these patterns. Therefore, it will take time to unlearn and reformulate them. Number five, work towards consistency. Because our patterns are so ingrained in us, it will take repeated intentional habits to form new ones. Once you identify your negative patterns and approach them differently, you will likely need to make multiple attempts to change them. Give yourself grace when you fall back into an old pattern and focus on picking up where you left off. Number six, return to your why. Reparenting can be a long and sometimes frustrating process. During stressful moments, it can be helpful to remind yourself why you're attempting to reparent. This can be challenging, but will encourage you to continue working through this process. Number seven, embrace self-discipline. Oftentimes, structure and routine are important parts of childhood that a person failed to receive from their parents. A parent may not have provided structure around battery setting and relationships, time management, and performance levels, and this can affect a child's emotional development. Learning that it's okay to say no, that things don't have to be perfect, and how to hold yourself accountable are all ways that you can reparent yourself. Number eight, seek joy. A key aspect of being a child is noticing the wonders of the world and allowing yourself to be delighted by them. As we grow, we are often given messages about when and how it is acceptable to feel joy. Seeking and embracing the things that bring you happiness is a great way to fulfill your inner child's unmet needs. Number nine, release blame. While it's important for you to hold your parents responsible for their shortcomings, remind yourself that they may have acted so due to their own tumultuous upbringing. They were likely doing the best that they could with the information and teachings that they had. Examining your parents' behaviors intentionally can help you decide if you plan on continuing a relationship with them and whether releasing the blame you may be holding against them is possible. Number 10, focus on self-care. Reparenting yourself can be draining and exhausting. It's important to make sure you are focusing on consistently tending to your own physical and emotional needs. Self-care can take many forms, including setting boundaries, disengaging from toxic relationships, taking time to yourself, tending to physical needs, and going to therapy. Some final thoughts. If there are patterns in your life that you would like to change, reparenting yourself or reparenting therapy may be beneficial. Focus on identifying how you'd like to make these changes, as well as maintaining self-care and implementing healthy lifestyle choices. Remember that these changes take time, so be patient with yourself and work towards consistency.